What is up everyone? I'm Igor, welcome to my workshop. Sorry it's been quite a while since the last time I made a video, but I simply wasn't inspired enough to make any content in these troubled times. However, recently I've stumbled upon an initiative that sparked my interest and inspiration once again, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about it. Also, I've recently gotten myself a simple USB microscope, and uh, I'd like to show you how different 3D prints look under uh, this microscope. So, let's get started, shall we? As you might have already noticed, there is a pandemic going on our planet. Chances are you are already under a quarantine or will be pretty soon, and I'm pretty sure that everybody is feeling the impact of it. You've also probably heard there are shortages of medical supplies in hospitals, you know, things like masks, gloves, face shields, respirators, and you know, other stuff. Now, the Prusa research company that we all know and love has developed a 3D printable face shield that anybody having a hobby-grade 3D printer can make. Uh, this shield has been reviewed and approved by the Czech Ministry of Health, so don't think this is uh, something, some random guy putting out some random model, no. Uh, the link to the download is going to be in the video description. Uh, they've put out designs for two pieces, which you should print ideally with PETG. Uh, PLA may work in a pinch, it's uh, more brittle, but, you know, may, may work. Um, PETG is preferred. Uh, they've also put out, put out a DXF file, which you can print and uh, get yourself a template, which you can use to cut out the actual shield part uh, from a half a millimeter or 0 0.02 inches thick transparent sheet. Uh, then you add a rubber strap strap, and, uh, well, you get your face shield. My voice is gonna sound funny now. Uh, but you know, even a something like a two liter straight soda bottle could work in a pinch. Um, this face shield is actually made from two empty laminator pouches uh, laminated together. Uh, it's a little bit flimsy, but uh, they seem to make a decent substitute. I could also probably laminate it like three of them together, at, it, and it would be more rigid. Uh, now there is a guy in California who, along with a couple of other guys, uh, have organized a campaign to help local hospitals where things are pretty bad. I mean, it's... Now, New York is the uh, probably worst place in, U in the USA, but, you know, California has been hit pretty bad. Uh, the link to his post on Twitter is in the description as well. Uh, so they are accepting these 3D printed parts. They have a supply of PETG sheets and uh, elastic straps, so they are assembling these face shields and uh, distributing them to their local hospitals. Uh, so, I was really moved by this, and um, I decided to, to take my part in this effort. And this week my printer will be churning out these parts pretty much non-stop. In fact, you can probably hear it in the background. Uh, that's why this video may be a little bit noisy. Um, I'm even thinking about bringing back my other printer, printer from the storage and uh, firing it up as well. It needs some TLC, but it's, a, it's in a decent shape. There is also absolutely nothing preventing anybody from organizing a similar group wherever you are located. Again, the STL files are available on Prusa website for free, and if you can source transparent sheets and rubber straps, or know someone who can, and you can sanitize everything properly, then don't hesitate, reach out to your local hospitals and uh, ask if they need face shields. And if they do, just start making them. Uh, perhaps the hospital can do the sanitizing part, so there is one less thing for you to worry about. Funny enough, a friend of mine called me yesterday and asked me if I could participate in helping a local hospital by 3D printing these very face masks. 
And although the situation here in Maryland is not as bad as it is in California, Washington, or New York, there is still a high demand for personal protection equipment, and this demand will be only growing for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give out some sets that I've already made locally and uh, send the rest to the guy in California, probably in the end of this week, uh, while continuing to make new ones. Now here is a word of warning. Do not fall for a scam like this. These um, people are trying to capitalize on the pandemic by pushing their nano hack masks, which you must print with their proprietary filament. They claim their fil PLA filament with some added copper is capable of killing the virus. Well, there is some truth in it, because copper does kill bacteria and viruses, but claiming that a mask printed from a uh, from plastic containing some copper nano unicorn powder uh, claims that such masks will protect you from coronavirus is bullshit. Also, their masks do not have an actual filter, and therefore they are absolutely useless without one. This is not to say this plastic has absolutely no application, but it's definitely not what they are claiming. Again, this plastic may be fine for other applications. For instance, I can imagine printing something like a doorknob from it, where bacteria and uh, viruses w get deactivated by copper eventually. All right, let's switch gears and unwind a little bit. As promised, I'm going to demonstrate some interesting features of various 3D prints under a microscope uh, with uh, about 50 to 200 times magnification. Let's go. This is a piece of a wall of a model printed in vase mode with white PLA on Artillery Sidewinder X1. After all my modifications, I'm getting acceptable print quality, but still, there are some uneven layers and I tend to attribute that to some undetected extruder issues. Uh, take a look at this line, for example. Um, with the light shining from the side, you can clearly see it it is casting a longer shadow, which means it is sticking out. Either that or the next line is actually sagging inwards. But then it, then it becomes normal again. To me this means that extrusion was uneven at that point and I measured my filament thickness, it's pretty consistent, so I think it's either a symptom of unstable temperature or uneven feeding. Here's another interesting specimen. It's a strand of old PTG filament extruded from 0.4 mm nozzle. The filament was stored on a shelf without any drying agents and uh, it was noticeably cracking and popping while printing and, and indeed you can see blobs and bubbles caused by steam exploding from the inside. It was also printing very stringy and blobby. This is a pirate coin that I printed a while ago with a copper-filled filament and oxidized it using salt, vinegar and hydrogen peroxide. You can see the patina and salt crust and uh, these copper flakes embedded in the filament. It was quite cool if you ask me. Um, now this is the part where, it, where there is less patina and you can clearly see those uh, copper particles. And for something totally different, here is how an SLA, or more specifically a DLP print, looks like under a microscope. What is especially cool about this one is that you can clearly see those microscopic voxels the print consists of. Pretty cool, huh? It kind of looks like, like a Minecraft world. Well, I guess this is all for today. I hope I was able to inspire you as well, and guys, we will survive this, and we will come out stronger if we cooperate and help each other. Uh, please check out the links in the description and see if you can contribute locally or otherwise. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching, happy tinkering, stay healthy, and don't forget to have fun 
in a safe manner, of course. Bye! Thank you.